is my truck down there. So the ropes, I use half inch ropes to pull my uh, tanks and stuff up on the roof. Uh, what I'm doing today is I'm checking the equipment out in the store. Uh, before the uh, winter really sets in, it's uh, it's a nice day. It's I guess it's in the 50s up here. A little bit of wind, but um, a couple of these units need some gas. Um, one this this unit here is to the walk-in cooler. It needs a fan downstairs, and I have to check for leaks on it. It's taking some gas. Um, and this unit is, is uh, glass doors. I, it needs a little gas too, and I have to check that one over there. Now, I've already put seven pounds, seven pounds, 12 ounces in 13 ounces now. And this is what I use for, I call this my roof flashlight. Uh, this has a, actually, this is pretty good. It's made by General, and it's got a, two LED lights in it so when you're in a dark place and you're trying to look behind a pipe you can uh, find leaks but what I what I do with this is I just use the Sun and it'll show me that it's you know what's in sight glass I don't know if you can see this You can see it's it's low on gas, and I'm putting some more. I have to put more gas in it. As the box, the walk-in cooler gets colder and colder, the refrigerant will shrink a little bit, and I'll have to put more in. If you can see, this is something interesting. If you carefully look around the edges of the green dot, the green dot is a good sign. The green dot means that it's uh, uh, it's nice and dry. That the filter dryer doesn't need to be changed. If you look around the edges of the green dot, you can see a little black, a little discoloration. That's carbonization. And that comes from very hot summer times where the compressor, the condenser's dirty, the compressor's running hot, the piston sleeves get extremely hot, and the old mineral oil would carbonize a little bit. And you get that carbonization, and it that carbonization will uh, if you get enough of it in the system, it will plug up the screen on your um, uh, expansion valve. Uh, that'll it'll help to do that. It also, if you have a headmaster valve, there's one down here. Uh, um, it will it, it'll cause that to act up a little bit too. But this needs the expansion valve is close enough. Oh, hey, Mr. Fly. Getting a little late in the season. I don't know. I just don't have the heart to kill the fly. It's gonna. He's gonna have a tough enough time up here in, the, in pretty soon. Okay. But uh, he's gone now. It looks like it's it's pretty full. Go. This is the evaporator coil. This is uh, another beer cooler. Been here a while. It works good. Down in the 30s right now. But um, it's got a it's got two fans out. This fans out, and I think uh, the middle one is out. I have to change them. I think it, see the blades not turning in there. Now this one, the blades turning fast. Now the blades turning fast. That one it's just freewheeling. It's just freewheeling, it's not doing anything. So that has to be changed and this motor has to be changed. But I I wanted to show you something. This goes on for years. A lot of boxes, coolers, will not see this. I mean, they're looking at the front of it every day. But you have, if you walk back here, and you look at this, look at this evaporator coil. It's completely, completely plugged up. Acting like a big filter back here, and all the way down is 
like that. That's just amazing. And this motor, this fan motor here hasn't worked in a while. You see a darker color, probably from the condensation or maybe even a little frost once in a while. But look at that. It's completely plugged up all the way down. That, here's my problem is, got all these soldiers in the way. I'll just start drinking this in and work my way down. Here. But I, this is going to be a pain cleaning this one. Got a drain on it, and it probably works okay. But I'm going to have to do some serious foaming on this one to get this clean. And get everything off this shelf. Literally lay down on this shelf. That's going to be a, a tricky one. There's your P-trap all the way down there. You can see that. Refrigeration P-trap. Okay. So got insulation all the way This is interesting. The air coming out is 32. Air coming out is 32. And this air going in back here, it's 39. I have a an 8 degree TD on a delta T. 9 degrees. Do that again. That, 32 Got a 7 degree TD now, Delta T so We'll check it afterwards There's a shutoff switch behind it. Now, this is you always want to do this. You don't know who wired it. You always want to test it before you take it for granted. Never take it for granted. Always 
be redundant and test it. That's how you, that's how you stay alive right there. And I, that's why I carry that in my pocket because there's, oh, that motor's hot. There's so many people out there calling themselves technicians trying to do, trying to earn a living at it, but they're, well, that came out of its, uh, I'll have to put a new slide on clip on it. Not a bad idea, actually. Well, this one came off okay. All right. Okay, so the power's off. Now I can put it back on again to get the system running. show this too. You can see how you can see how see how frosted this is leaving. Because it's plugged up the heat is not transferring into the uh, fins into the tubing. plugged up back there that the heat's not from the box the cooler is not transferring into the tubing and you can see how cold the tubing is leaving the super heat is very low on this I'll check it all tomorrow when I come back but uh, I'll set the Delta T on the valve too and I'll get this thing cleaned out and working uh, properly but this thing's poor thing's a mess
muscle oil 